Hi, so it's Dr. Fox, and let's talk about what to do after you've had an explosive episode. And this is true for many, many people, but someone wrote me recently and they asked, well, can I describe or explain or give some suggestions what folks can do after they have a borderline episode or a narcissistic rage episode? What can you do? And in order to lessen a lot of the consequences of that, a lot of the issues and concerns that come with it. So here's the thing. First and foremost, you've had an episode. Hopefully nobody was hurt. This includes you too. And it's not just what you do to others or what you do to the environment around you. It's also what have you done to yourself? Hopefully you're safe. Hopefully there's been nothing irreparable. Now, after an episode, typically what's happening, you've calmed down, you've put that energy out, you've gotten that rage out. And in doing that, you're able to calm down a bit, slow down a little bit. Then, and this is the personality disorder part, and this is the maladaptive beliefs, behaviors, and patterns part that adds to ongoing problems and issues, is that then you go inward, you attack yourself, you make yourself feel small, oh, I shouldn't have done that, this equals that, this is this, this is, and you start adding all these characterological attributions, you may be calling yourself names, you may be deriding yourself, you engage in a lot of shame, fear, doubt, guilt, a lot of questioning about your worth, things like that. that, that shows that you've gone inward. And in going inward, it's this belief that you can make yourself feel bad enough that then it's okay to go on. It's a self-punishment plan, which is something that I've talked about in the past. I'll put a link here if you wanna check that video out. And that self-punishment plan, what happens is, is that you're, you're trying to make yourself feel bad enough and feel low enough so then you believe or feel okay to go forward. But what happens is each time you do that, you take another piece out. It's like, it's like one of those Jenga towers, right? and you take a piece out, and it adds to the instability. That's kind of what makes it a game for Jenga, but mental health-wise, it's not a game because those little pieces that you take out, when you engage in a lot of self-attack, when you engage in a lot of self-attribution of hate, guilt, shame, doubt, and you believe or you create or you intensify abandonment fears, rejection sensitivity, emptiness, these are all components related to narcissistic personality disorder, borderline personality disorder, but also these things can exist outside of those disorders too because people do that. After we have that explosive episode, we have to resist going inward. And the way we do that is we have to make reparation. We have to say, okay, what did I do? And how do I repair it? We have to repair the incident. So there was an incident in undoing, an undoing episode. So if we go to object relations theory, we go to an, un, an undoing episode. And that was acting out, that's so on and so forth, right? Then, we have to repair that undoing. And this, this happens a lot. So in, in therapy, just to give a, uh, an example, is that so I may have a client who comes in, and they're mad about something that happened, or they're mad at someone in their life. And that session can be very, very intense. And in the intensity, what happens is the client sees me as a safer object, so they let me have it. They call me names, or they tell me that they have this particular idea of what they're going to do themselves, others, whatever it may be. And as we process that, and as we see that, it's undoing our relationship. It's creating that distance. It's not going to sever it, but it's going to challenge that relationship. And if you've seen my other videos, you know that I talk about these are troubling sessions. These are really good sessions. When we align and we work together against it, against BPD, NPD, or whatever issues and concerns are going on, these are powerful sessions. These are challenging sessions. This is when we're separated. And within this space is where those maladaptive beliefs, behaviors, and patterns come into play. And they create distance between us. They create distance between you and your significant others, you and your friends, you and your parents, you and people of value in your life. So then we have to repair it. And if we have to make reparations, here's the thing. 
going up to someone and apologizing or taking responsibility for what you did, maybe what you said, part of that instance, that, that's not easy. Here's the thing, though, is that, yeah, you know, you, you had the episode. Hopefully, you didn't hurt, hurt anybody. You didn't hurt yourself or anything like that. So we have to go to that person. We have to apologize and say, you know, I just kind of lost it, but I'm working on it. And you know, initially how hard that is? I'm sure you do. But part of the difficulty in doing that, believe it or not, it's going to create something in your head saying, you know what, I don't really like doing that. So I need to control those explosive episodes. And your family in the head, your BPD or your NPD is going to tell you, you can't control me. You can't control this episode. So don't even try. And you're going to believe it. Because if you didn't believe it, you wouldn't have these long-term disorders of personality. But you got to push back on it because you can control it. These are controllable disorders. Personality disorders are controllable. Depression, anxiety, things like that. These are manageable conditions. Is it easy? No. Whoever said it was easy? Anybody tells you it's easy, they're selling you something. I'm not selling you anything. I'm simply telling you that the data and the research support this. You got to have hope that you can push back and control these things. But you go and you apologize. You don't deserve to be further ridiculed and made to feel small and inferior because you're going back to repair, to make those reparations of that relationship. And if that happens, you have to question that relationship, I think. This goes for you too, meaning that when you go internally and you're making yourself feel small, and you're revisiting what you did, and you're thinking about the things you said and the things you did and what happened and all this other stuff. You can't attack yourself either. And if you are, you have to question that relationship. Why is the relationship with yourself full of shame, fear, doubt, guilt, inferiority, whatever it may be that's driving maybe abandonment fears, rejection sensitivity, emptiness, depression, anxiety, whatever it may be. And you have to go back and explore these things and challenge these things because you're never going to make yourself feel bad enough to do good things. Someone is never going to make you feel bad enough to do good things. And you are not going to make someone else feel bad enough to do good things. So the idea is going to repair it. You don't deserve to be ridiculed for doing so. But as you do that, as you take those reparations and you take that responsibility, That is a step in the direction of getting control. It's not easy, but it's a critical component. And please try it. Leave comments about how it went. I'd love to hear that. I hope you found this helpful. And please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.